1939, the Germans invaded Poland and World War II began. Jews were immediately targeted and subjected to violence and humiliation by German soldiers. The Germans and their collaborators killed as many as 1.5 million children. This number includes over a million Jewish children and tens of thousands of Romanian children, German children with physical and mental disabilities living in institutions, Polish children, and children residing in the occupied Soviet Union. In the ghettos, Jewish children died from starvation, exposure, and a lack of adequate clothing and shelter. The German authorities were indifferent to this mass death. They considered most of the younger ghetto children to be unproductive and hence useless eaters. Because children were generally too young to be used for forced labor, German authorities generally selected them, the elderly, ill, and disabled, for the forced deportations to killing centers, or as the first victims led to mass graves to be shot. It's difficult in times like these, ideals, dreams, and cherished hopes arise within us, only to be crushed by grim reality. It's a wonder I haven't abandoned all my ideals. They seem so absurd and impractical, yet I cling to them because I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are truly good at heart. Life in the ghettos was usually unbearable. Overcrowding was common. One apartment might have several families living in it. Plumbing broke down and human waste was thrown in the streets along with the garbage. Contagious diseases spread rapidly in such cramped, unsanitary housing. People were always hungry. Germans deliberately tried to starve residents by allowing them to purchase only a small amount of bread, potatoes, and fat. Some residents had some money or valuables they could trade for food smuggled into the ghetto. Others were forced to beg or steal to survive. During the long winters, heating fuel was scarce, and many people lacked adequate clothing. People weakened by hunger and exposure to the cold became easy victims of disease. Tens of thousands died in the ghettos from illness, starvation, or cold. Some individuals killed themselves to escape their hopeless lives. Here, in this carload, I'm Eve, with my son Abel. If you see my older boy, Cain, son of Adam, tell him that I'm here in this carload. I am Eve with my son Abel. If you see my older boy, Cain, son of Adam, tell him that I'm here in this carload. I am Eve with my son Abba. If you see my older boy, Cain, son of Adam, tell him that I'm More than 43,000 Jews, 21% of the ghetto inhabitants, died due to the harsh conditions. Friday. May 16th, 1941. I have been examined by a doctor at school. She was terrified at how thin I am. The checkup has left me frightened and worried. Every day, children became orphaned, and many had to take care of even younger children. Orphans often lived on the streets, begging for bits of bread from others who had little or nothing to share. Many froze to death in the winter. In order to survive, children had to be resourceful and make themselves useful. Small children in a Warsaw ghetto sometimes help smuggle food to their families and friends crawling through narrow openings in the ghetto wall. They did so at great risk as smugglers who were caught were severely punished. Many young people tried to continue their education by attending school classes or organized by adults in many ghettos since such classes were usually held secretly in defiance of the Nazis, pupils that learn to hide books under their clothes when necessary and to avoid being caught. The first thing I saw as they opened the door of the cattle car and arrival in Birkenau was a prisoner in striped clothes shouting in German, quickly, 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 everyone down. He wasn't the only one shouting. 100 men dressed like him were shouting at the same time along the entire length of the platform. Added to this was the barking of the SS dogs. The noise was simply terrible. All we wanted to do was get down so they would stop the awful noise. We were confused, dirty, exhausted, and starving. Where were we? I didn't know. We just wanted to get out of the cattle cars. I was suddenly alone. I looked for my family. My family looked for me. So it was all huge. Halt one huge shot. 
and it hurt our ears and it definitely didn't help the terrible mental or physical state we were in. Don't they know the world stopped breathing? And once there was a garden and a child and a tree. And once there was a father and a mother and a dog. And once there was a house and a sister and a grandma. And once there was a life. Although the Nazis were willing to exploit some Jews for labor for a while, ultimately their goal was to murder all of them. The result was that some six million Jews were murdered in the Holocaust. Um, I'm speaking today, uh, first I'd just like to mention there were a lot of different fates for children during the Holocaust. Um, some, some kids were lucky enough to uh, be transported prior to the outbreak of the war for something called kinder transport, which brought them to other countries and they had to leave without their parents and live with foster families. Those were the lucky children. Um, others, uh, like a friend of mine, um, were put in concentration camps. My father was a Holocaust survivor. He was a child about 10 years old in Poland when the war broke out. Um, he was one of four children. He was the oldest boy. And he lived in a very small uh, farming type town in Poland. Poland was the first, the first um, country to be invaded by the Nazis in 1939. And I don't have every detail, but what my father told me was he was a young boy in the middle of the town square when the Nazis came into the town. First thing they liked to do when they came in um, to every town was round up the men and put them in the town center. He remembers this. His dad, my grandfather, was a butcher. And um, he wasn't in the town at the time. I don't know where he was. But my father remembers seeing many of the men being rounded up and the town baker actually begging for his life. He begged the Nazis. He said, I'm a baker. I can bring you bread. I'm useful. And they didn't care and they shot him. They killed him in front of his children. Um, so basically, my father ran back and warned his dad, don't go to town today. Run, run and escape. So my grandfather ran through alleys in the back of the houses and ran out of town. And uh, later, the fam rest of the family and many other townspeople all picked up what they could and ran to get out of town. Um, they had to cross a river. Um, my, one of my aunts was almost left behind in the crowd. Um, and they had to leave behind uh, a grandma who had a broken leg and couldn't travel. Um, they later found out after the war that she, um, she as well as most all the Jews that were left in the town were killed. Um, she was actually murdered by her neighbors uh, for her home. So that was not even a Nazi um, murder. Um, they escaped and they hid. My grandfather had some connections through local farmers who hid the family for a while. So it was kind of like running and hiding, running and hiding, um, until finally they were, um, I guess, spotted by German uh, soldiers. They um, were given a choice. My grandfather was given a choice to board one of two of these types of trains that we visualized on the screen. He had no idea which train to get on. It was luck, if you want to say. He picked one of the trains and found out later the other train was going to a concentration camp. All the people on that train were killed and died. Um, the train they chose took them to Siberia I don't know if you know about Siberia. Siberia is one of the coldest places in the world. Temperatures dip down to maybe negative 60 degrees. Um, it snows from probably September through May. 
they were put into a labor camp as described in the film. Uh, they had to work seven days a week. Food was horrible. Everyone had lice, bed bugs. Uh, they weren't dressed for the weather. They didn't have proper clothing. Um, most people died, a good number of people died out of the thousands of people that were there from disease. Um, they were lucky enough, I'm not sure how long they were actually there, but they were lucky enough, which was a miracle, uh, the four children in the family and the two parents to come through and survive as a family. And uh, basically after the war, they were put in a displacement camp for people who lost their homes. And um, the Red Cross was there and gave them a choice of where they would like to settle. My family chose the United States, settled in Brooklyn. Um, other families chose other countries, you know, Israel, a lot of people went to Israel. Um, my father really had very little schooling. He really didn't have an education, whatever education he had up to maybe age 10. Um, my uncle was able to come to the United States and continue high school here, or at least go to high school. He was high school age. Um, basically, that is the um, story of my family and how it played out. Hi, I'm from Wagner College Holocaust Center. Um, I've been working with Lavelle, some of you may know, for two and a half years bringing survivors. Staten Island, some of you may live on Staten Island, I guess most of you live here, has dozens of Auschwitz survivors. It's hard to understand, but after Auschwitz, when people chose places to go, a lot of them chose New York, and from New York, among them was Staten Island. So survivors of genocide are your neighbors. Um, why 